Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about a recent report in the British Medical Journal about menopausal hormone therapy and risk of dementia. This is an observational study from Denmark that's been causing a lot of alarm among clinicians and leading to many questions about whether the findings are likely to be causal or should be used in clinical decision-making about hormone therapy in early menopause. Now, this large observational study from the Danish National Registry suggested that hormone therapy is linked to increased risk of dementia, whether it's used short-term or long-term, whether it's started in early menopause, even age 50 to 55, or in uh, later menopause. Now, I and my colleague, Dr. Kajal Kantarsi at Mayo Clinic, were invited to write an editorial in the BMJ to accompany this paper, and I want to share with you some of the caveats. Um, that we presented. Now, we believe the findings um, should not be used to infer causality for several reasons. One is that these observational study findings are at odds with several randomized clinical trials of hormone therapy and cognitive function among women in early menopause. Even the WHI memory study of younger women, the WHIMSY study um, in women who were randomized to hormone therapy age 50 to 55 showed neutral effects of hormone therapy, both estrogen plus progestin and estrogen alone. Um, neutral effects on cognitive function. The women who were age 65 and older did have an increased risk of dementia related to hormone therapy, but not the women in early menopause. Also, the KEEPS trial, the Kronos Early Estrogen Prevention Study, showed a neutral effect of hormone therapy on cognitive uh, function among women in early menopause, as did the ELITE trial. Um, among the women who were in early menopause, no adverse effect, no, uh, a neutral effect on cognitive function. Now, in addition, there are several methodologic issues that should be taken into account. In the early years of this study, when women were enrolling into the registry, uh, there was a perception that hormone therapy was a benefit for um, cognitive concerns, women who had disrupted sleep, and uh, concerns about concentration. They have been seeking out um, hormone therapy. This was prior to the results of the uh, WHI, and therefore there could be confounding by indication. We do know that more severe vasomotor symptoms and disrupted sleep have been linked to higher volumes of white matter hyperintensities uh, in women, that this is a marker of poor vascular health. Also, there could be confounding by detection and surveillance in that these are women who were in the medical system, they were receiving a uh, prescription, and um, they may have been followed more closely, may have been more likely to have early signs of dementia picked up. Um, by their uh, clinicians than uh, women who were not receiving regular medical care. Also, after the results of the WHI, when um, in 2003, the WHI memory study findings were published, there may have been more vigilant monitoring of women who had been uh, treated with hormone therapy. So there was also potentially some confounding um, by, that, by that issue. So overall, we feel that the results should not be used to infer causality. They're at odds with the uh, randomized clinical trials, and there are also several methodological concerns that really should not lead to denying hormone therapy use to women in early menopause who are seeking treatment for clear indication, such as a bothersome, moderate to severe uh, vasomotor symptoms in the context of discussions with the patient and shared decision-making. Thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.